my favourite game is The Loop of Fury because it develops your listening skills and like your communication skills as well as remembering things and it's fun as well. On your desk there are little glass jars, right? And in your little glass jars there are little pieces of paper. Could you lift them out and pass them around so everybody's got at least one? Pass them around and everybody should have one. One table's got one less because I couldn't think of another question, but life goes on. Right, now everyone's got a little piece of paper. Now somebody's got number one. Right, so Luke's got number one. Now what happens is, is Luke reads out his question. Then somebody else in here has the answer to that question on their little card. Then you'd say your question and we go on and on and on and on and on. So listen out for your question and then it goes all the way back to Luke and then we stop the clock. So we'll try it now and we'll try it at the end and see if we can do it quicker at the end. Does that make sense? Yes? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. What is an up or down, up or down wave? Is this a transverse wave? What is the top of a transverse wave called? It's a peak. Good lad, go. What is the bottom of a transverse wave called? A trough. How do you remember these? A mountain peak is at the top. A pig eats out of the trough. What is the distance from peak to peak called? It is a wavelength. What else can you measure the wavelength? From trough to trough. If you've got like a class of say 25 yeah. and you give them two questions each, there's 50 questions on everything you've done in the topic. And it's a bit of excitement as well. Time it. Come on, come on, come on. Get it quicker, get it quicker. Go, go. And then at the end of the lesson, swap cards and hopefully we can do it a little bit quicker. It'll be very quiet. What kind of sound is a wave with a small wavelength? It has a high pitch. What kind of sound is a wave with a long wavelength? It will be long. Yes! 303. Oh, Goodness me. Three seconds. I was getting a bit hairy in the end there with three seconds. Right, pop them back in the jars, please. This next one is called the above head game. What happens is, Matthew, is we have four people out the front, right? and they get a word written above their head. Now we've only had two lessons, so it'll be from last lesson or this lesson. And you have five lives. And you have to ask the class a question. You might be like, am I to do with waves? And for every yes, you keep a life. But for every no, you lose a life and lose a life and lose a life. If you have a guess and it's incorrect, you lose a life. The idea is to guess what you are before your five lives have gone. That's a really good one for difficult keywords and seeing how much they know about the word that's above their head. So rather than guessing what they are, they have to ask questions. But again, the whole class is involved because if you're not stood out, you've got to answer the person's question. You've got to say yes or no. Am I something to do with heat? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now I'm to do with heat flow in a solid. Am I a material that is a bad conductor? No. So how many lives have I got? I'm down to four now. Thank you. Am I to do with something about things moving in the, in the solid. No! Go on. Am I something to do with heat moving in a gas? <laughs> Is she something to do with heat moving in a gas? Yeah. Yes. Do you want to have a guess? I can't remember. Okay. Am I, am I something to do with a good conductor? Yeah. yeah. Can I have a guess? Yeah. Am I metal? No. no. <laughs> Am I a bad conductor? Is she a bad conductor? No. You asked a minute ago, you said something to do with, is it to do with like heat moving? And you, it is to do with like heat moving and it's when perhaps heat doesn't want to move. When what? Um, when... It's not your go. <laughs> your... <laughs> um, I can't think. You're something to do with, um, yeah. you were heat moving. You're something to do with convection. Heat. Rising. That's the one, rises. Oh! At the end, you normally like, just want to fall asleep, but when he brings the games, it's just like, you just, like, dead happy. <laughs> right, first things first, on board, we have 30 little pieces of paper. Underneath each one of them little pieces of paper is something new that you've learned in science this year. Something new. Like you came in at the beginning of year seven, I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. I want you to make up a sentence with something in there. Right, who wants to have a go? Let's hear it, Blundell. That's just a simple one to practice literacy. It's good with the year seven and eight who are being introduced to lots of new, sort of new science words. Because of course, marks on sats are for good sentence structure. If you just put down a, the word, you won't get the mark. So it gets them used to making sentences with these science words in. That'll do for me, let's have another one. James! Um, 15. Number 15. Can you tell me please, sir, a sentence with the word joules in. Energy is measured by joules. I'm loving it, let's have another one. Neville! 11. Legs 11, a sentence with law of energy in. 
And the law of energy, you can't create it and you can't destroy it. Oh, magnificent answer. Everybody asks me where I get ideas from. Some of them are like robbed from other places, like a sentence game. It's just question of sport, really. So you just keep your eye on things and if you think something's good on the telly or something, you think, oh, how can I? How can I adapt that? How can I use that? Quiz, you know, if you see a quiz show and there's a certain round that's good, you think, oh, how can I adapt that for my classroom?